Mary Spender's guitar stories, six string tales of woe and glory. Send me your guitar stories, and I might choose to read your guitar stories. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Guitar Stories. I think we're just going to get into it, but if you want to learn more about how to submit your guitar story, then check out the description below. Okay, so first, email. Okay, this story comes from Roberto. Hello Mary, here's my entry. I know that you said that we should have picked our most beautiful or craziest guitar, but in my case, these two beauties were built from spare parts of previous mods I did to the first Strat I owned. Okay, so for me, it's like if these two guitars were sisters who share part of the soul of my first ever American Stratocaster, which I still own. Okay, let's look at these. Oh my. One of them has had some artwork done to it. Very cool though, very unique. The Artcaster is a Stratocaster built with an original Mexican Fender arm and a basswood body I found online. It's equipped with Dimarzios in the bridge and neck positions and a Seymour Duncan duck busser in the middle. It sounds big. Cool. Oh yeah, pickup choice is cool. Wow. Then he goes into all the configuration and then shows the body without anything on it. And then a lovely surprise was that Juan Manuel wrote the title of the songs of my last band's demo in the neck pocket. Well, that's sweet. You know that it's there. Ah. So this is the story behind my two most beautiful and crazy guitars I own. I hope you enjoyed. And once again, sorry for butchering your language. Oh, come on. That was great. Thanks, Roberto. That's very sweet. I want to do that. I still, I say this every guitar stories of which there's only been one released at this moment. So uh, yeah, I need to build my own guitar, don't I? All right, Roberto, that was wonderful. Thank you. This picture comes from Ants. Hi, Mary, enjoying your content a lot. Many thanks, very inspiring. Thank you. Okay, okay, is this, is this actually? Is this signed? Is this, is that, is that a genuine signature? We shall find out, I, I assume. Um, this is my over 20 years old original Gibson. I purchased this from a lovely guy, lovely Irish guy who was sadly diagnosed with lung cancer and passed away six months after he sold me this. He got this for his son, um, but it, it wasn't suitable. It had too big a neck for a kid, so he was going to get a piano instead. Um, it was quite a struggle for me to buy this as I didn't have much money coming in at the time, but I just couldn't let this guitar go. Sadly, I haven't practiced lately, yet this guitar reminds me of how short life is and how important it is to be ourselves. Very true. Keep creating and enjoying the moment. Thank you. Um, by the way, it's supposed to be U2 lead guitar player Edge's signature on it. I've never managed to get in touch with him to find out if it's real. Um, it, was it was purchased from Guitar Empire, Bray, Dublin, Ireland. Many thanks again, Ants. Okay, okay. So we kind of need to decipher whether or not it's real or not. And if it's not real, why would you sign it from the edge? Why would, why would you fake it? So it's a bit confusing, isn't it? Like. Do people think that if you just sign a guitar with someone's stage name on it, <laughs> that there is going to go up in value? Hmm. Beautiful guitar, though. I love that body shape. Um, I love the Florentine swirl. I always muddle it up, whether it's Florentine or Venetian. I think Florentine, Google is not giving me any answers. Yeah, Florentine. Yeah. Florentine cutaway. A Florentine cutaway comes to a sharp point, creating a horn-like shape. It is more complex and labor-intensive to craft than the Venetian because the guitar is initially built as a non-cutaway, after which a section of the treble side up about is sliced out. Let me show you an example of a Florentine that I have that looks very similar to that guitar. Ta da You see that? Can you see that? Can you see that? Oh yeah, that is a Florentine. This is a badass guitar. I just spoke really loudly into the microphone. Um, I will be making a video on it soon. 
Okay, this email comes from Fletcher. Regrettably, I have no interesting story, but can't resist the urge to share my 97 American Standard Strat and my cat. I mean, Fletcher, you know the way to my heart. Um, I hope you get some great stories. My boring backstory is I bought the guitar as a rank beginner, buying a way better instrument than I needed at the time. My thinking was, this way I'll never be able to blame the instrument. Very true. I know anything that comes out of it is all me. Uh, 23 years later, I'm a hobbyist musician who plays out with my friends a few times a year. No pressure, all fun. And then look at your cat. But Fletcher, you didn't include the name of the cat. I mean, come on. That cat is better than the guitar. I can't say that. Can I say that? I mean, I think the cat knows that you're probably more interested in the, I mean, the cat, I mean, I don't know how to react to this really, but like, basically, if you send in a picture of a guitar and a cat, I mean, we'll just have to include those because I love cats. Grew up with them. Um, many of you might have seen on, on Instagram, Mr. Ralph, my parents' cat. <laughs> I can't believe I just called him Mr. Ralph. That's what my dad calls him. <laughs> okay, I think we're gonna learn something new here. This one is going to be a bit of a ride. Um, a dead Brazilian guitar brand. Lucas has sent this in. Hello, Mary, my name is Lucas and I've followed you for two years now. I love your content. I own a Finch Flying V with a very nice story behind it. Finch was a Brazilian brand that doesn't exist anymore. The model I own was made between the 70s and 80s. It was my uncle's first guitar and he gave it to me when I started learning to play back in 2009. It is my first guitar and I love it. Unfortunately, when I was 15, God knows why, I took the top paint off. So now it has this natural top to it. It looks kind of cool, but I wish I'd never done that since this is the only one I could find even with a deep search into the internet. Um, but since I have no plans of selling it ever, it's okay. And this makes it a personal touch to the guitar so that I know it's my guitar for sure. She plays so nicely that every time I go to a shop and try the other guitars, I have this feeling of, damn, I wish this guitar played like my Flying V. So I never got a new guitar just because I never felt I needed one. The original caps got fried somewhere between 2014 and 2016. I have no idea why, but I tried taking it to a lot of places to fix it and they never worked for more than two days after fixing. I ended up installing some nice Ibanez caps to it and they sound just as good as the originals. Another cool thing is that this guitar is a kind of a mystery. I know nothing about the hardware or wood or nothing. I just know that one of the times I took it to set up, I was passing by a guitar store and an old man that owns the, the shop was outside. The bag I was carrying the guitar in was half open and the guitar neck was a little exposed. Zip up your bag right, okay, Lucas? Um, just enough to see the Finch logo out of the top. The old man saw me passing by, called, called me out and said, damn, is this a Finch guitar? Wow, I have not seen one of those in years. I had one and I bought a Gibson right after it and the Gibson never played like the Finch. This guitar is amazing. Wanna get in the shop and test it out on one of my amps? Obviously I said yes and we had an awesome time. Anyway, thank you for your time. I love your videos. Keep up with the good job. Uh, here is a photo of the guitar. Hey. I mean, that doesn't look like a DIY job. I think that looks kind of cool. Yeah, you can sort of see the different woods it's made out of. Great. I mean, flying Vs are great. I wish I owned a flying V. Oh my God. Why did I start this series when it's basically just gonna make me want to buy more guitars? Why did I do that? I don't <laughs> need, <laughs> I don't need to do that. Oh my God, this one's, a, this one's emotional. This story comes from Ju Jintao. Hello, Mary, nice to meet you. I'm from South Korea and also a musician. Hi. Wow, I, I'm still blown away by how, I, I just don't know how my little videos reach so many different places. And um, yeah, thank you very much for, thank you very much for watching. Eey. I've subscribed to your channel for two years now. Your music is so good. Thank you. Oh, he includes many pleasantries. 
He knows that flattery will get him everywhere. This story is called Lost My Telly. I used to practice with my bandmate at the rehearsal studio, which we could uh, rent a room for hours at. And in 2009, I left my guitar there because the studio was far from my home and my work. I could leave the guitar there because I trusted the studio owner, Kay, and I was very familiar with him, but there were so many bands that came by that one day I left my guitar there and I was way more careless about my guitar that day than any other day because my work was so busy then. So my company's owner and artist was on tour. He was a famous musician in Korea. And after the tour ended, I visited the studio again and then I couldn't find my guitar. Oh no, I lost it. It seemed someone took it. The studio owner told me he would pay for it. Wow, um, that's very generous. My God, um, but I knew it was my fault. I tried to find who took it, but I couldn't. Oh my God. Sad thing is I didn't just lose the guitar. I lost my unique pedal and the DS1 pedal. More than anything, I was so sad. I lost the only uh, one existing design pedal in the world and the guitar has my own tone. What is that pedal? So you lost a unique pedal that you built, built yourself? I've never forgotten that guitar. I even cried a lot thinking about it. Sometimes I dream about it. I am so sorry. I'm so sorry that that happened to you. I mean, okay. I mean, I've done it. I actually, like, I've left instruments with people all over the place and been really lucky with guitars. I've never had a guitar stolen. I've had amps stolen twice. I mean, once was unlucky, twice was me being a fool. Um, but yeah, uh, just be careful with your belongings. I know that people aren't really going out anywhere anytime soon right now, so um, you're probably all staying home and staying safe, but yeah, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry that you lost your telly. This story comes from a very dear patron of mine and he has told me this in person and I know he wants to remain unnamed. Um, but, uh, hi Mary, I'm responding to your request for our favorite guitar and its stories. I have two that are sort of about the same guitar. First one, here is my Dave Grohl signature 335, serial number DG089, one of only 300 guitars produced. It's Pelham Blue, the version that Dave himself mostly plays. Incredible. And look at the framed certificate. That's awesome. And then also the artwork in the background's great. Oh wait, okay. Many years ago, a friend of mine who was a collector bought this guitar when it was originally produced and it was hanging on a wall in his music room for years. He knew I was and am a huge Dave Grohl and Foo Fighters fan. And one day he called me uh, and, and said he was looking to turn over his collection a bit and he couldn't think of anyone else who would enjoy this guitar more than I would and wanted to know if I wanted to buy it. I asked him how much he wanted for it and he told me that he paid $2,500 for it and thought that was a fair price. That's a great price. I quickly checked eBay and there were two of these available, the cheaper of which was $13,500. So I jumped at the chance to buy it at retail price. I've had it for 10 years now, played it on tour and on multiple recordings, and it is today, uh, to this day my favorite guitar to play live with. <sighs> my God. So for the second one, I have a very eccentric friend who happens to be very wealthy. <laughs> Can I get a super wealthy friend? and loves giving crazy gifts, that gives gifts, come on. Can I make friends with this guy? Uh, this friend also knew I was a huge Foo Fighters fan and at one point had tried to arrange for me to have dinner with Dave Grohl when he was here in Austin, where I live, taping a show for Austin City Limits. When he wasn't able to pull that off, he tracked down a guitar of Dave's that had been up for auction at a charity event. That guitar happened to be the first guitar off the line for the DG335 series. <laughs> which was given by Gibson to Dave Kroll as a proof. He turned around and signed it and auctioned it off and eventually my friend acquired it and gifted it to me. Here it is, the Dave Kroll signature 335 serial number 001. And Dave has signed it. 001, <laughs> the headstock. Wow, okay. Have a great evening, unnamed patron. Of course. Oh my God. Zero, zero, one. 
0.001. That's awesome. That's awesome. Okay, there we go. Second episode of Guitar Stories. Thank you so much for sending in your emails. Um, if you want to learn more about how to send in your email, we're going to open it up to the public. So uh, check out the description below. Obviously, anyone who is a patron of mine will be prioritized. So that is the best way to send them in. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Hopefully you've subscribed. Give this video a thumbs up and I'll be seeing you very soon.